In a prior lesson titled Eight Ways Conspire Against the Work and Worker, I described the consequences of overproduction and explained why Toyota considers overproduction the worst of all forms of waste. And in fact, overproduction, as it was presented in that prior video, generates a whole network of waste, uh, beginning with inventory and then many others. Now we're going to explore the reasons why we overproduce. Overproduction, first of all, we're going to define as making more than what you can sell in the near term or uh, from an um, internal point of view, making more than what you can pass on to the next production step. Now, we will see that in most cases, the decisions overproduce have nothing or little to do with customer demand. Instead, they are internally driven, and these are decisions which are made uh, not necessarily with any connection with uh, uh, the markets. So, we will see that there's like an, an, an internal drive that makes all these things happen. Teams produce more than needed, in some cases, to protect themselves against stockouts. But let's keep in mind that this is also, this tends to be especially uh, critical when there's somebody who may take the blame for this one-off event, which of course leads to many other things as to how we are compensated and, uh, and how we are uh, measured in our performance. Another reason why teams may overproduce or make more than what they need is to protect themselves from the consequences of having uh, inaccurate forecasts. Now, this of course may, however, be an indication that you have poor knowledge of your markets, poor information about how they uh, go up and down, uh, or maybe that you have poor relationship with your customers, which then leads to the customer self-protecting against um, perhaps uh, uncertainty as to your ability to deliver, and they self-protect by uh, overbuying. Companies also, especially those which are uh, like hard driven by sales teams, may want to overproduce so that they may sell with confidence. So this would be, uh, um, you may say, you know, let's, let's make sure that, uh, that production makes everything that we may be able to sell. And so, uh, although production has to be driven by sales, this is almost like an, an, an exaggeration of this, uh, of this effect. Uh, if, if anything, the reason why I want to highlight this is because it shows a disconnect between the objective of, of the sales department and the objectives and priorities of production, where each one of uh, the departments separately tries to just maximize their own benefit, as opposed to maximizing the benefit of the whole of the company. Another reason why uh, overproduction, uh, when overproduction may be likely, is uh, when uh, you have individual or team quotas that rule behavior. So we're talking about the case where, under and, and in this type of, uh, of circumstances, especially when you have what now is known as a stretch goals, which are forced upon staff or, and teams or plants or offices or regions, but without giving them a corresponding means to achieve these goals, then this leads to a number of behaviors. For instance, employees will keep busy making things, making product, just to look busy. So this impacts the individuals. Supervisors will keep employees and equipment busy also to satisfy monthly targets. This now gets bigger, a bigger impact to, to teams and, 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 and crews. And uh, managers will take uh, any means necessary in order to meet the departmental goals. So this is an even further expansion of the impact of, of, of this type of behavior. 
Um, and uh, all of this compounds and makes production uh, ramp up, usually towards the end of a certain period uh, for which there was a, a, an established quota. Um, and that leads to even more imbalances and even further variation. Overproduction may also be due when smaller factors take on larger importance than they should. For instance, what happens when you have uh, materials? And by this we may mean uh, raw materials, but also uh, supplies. And they just happen to be available now. So when you have them available right now, uh, it may actually create an urgency to do something with them, such as putting them into production and creating more work in process uh, 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 inventories. Another possibility related to this is that maybe there is a bargain on materials or on supplies. Therefore, this would lead to uh, the purchasing department taking advantage of that. But then, uh, now, once uh, all these materials we were purchased on a bargain um, and probably kind of bump up the level of raw materials that you may usually have, once they arrive to your plant, or once uh, it's, it's time to do something with them, then they also are going to create this urgency to do something with them. Another possibility is equipment. Equipment may also be a, one of these factors that um, uh, leads to overproduction. For instance, if you already have a difficult setup in place, it may seem only sensible to keep using it and make more, more of the product. So this is equipment as it relates, for instance, with setups. Um, but does, don't you think that this actually means that perhaps we should improve the way in which we set up the equipment? This seems almost like an example of you know, the tail wagging the dog, a smaller factor having an influence on the larger one. Production inefficiencies may also be a drive to overproduce. For instance, if we cannot make more product of type B easily, why not make more of product type A? And again, all these decisions of, product, of production mix, product mix, have nothing to do with, um, with what's necessary in the marketplace. It's just a local, uh, locally driven solution or, um, or approach. So this would be the f uh, when you have um, production inefficiencies. Now, if this seemed bad enough, then there is even a war situation, which is when the production inefficiencies, such as the low yields or poor quality, can drive to overproduce. This is what I would consider one of the worst, worst examples of reasons for overproduction. And it goes more or less like this. Somebody may say, well, let's make more of product A, which well, we don't make so well, we don't make with very high quality, Let's make more of it so that there is more that will pass quality control so that then we may meet our quotas without rework. So I can even see, I have seen where people kind of try to give it a certain spin to say, well, we're not going to do any rework, we're not going to spend any money on rework, but the, 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 if your quality levels are still low, the only way to produce more at the end without rework is just to make more, thus our production. And of course, the underlying problem of low quality is never addressed, never solved. Another reason is an accounting-related reason can also make a company to overproduce. What happens, for instance, when you have an expensive machine, expensive piece of equipment that is depreciating? Well, in that case, what is going to happen is that somebody will make the decision that that piece of equipment just can't stay, can't stay idle, logically. And so the supervisor in charge of it will keep it running uh, by the way, thinking that he's doing the company a great service. So in summary, we see that overproduction may not happen just because we want to make more product, but because 
for instance, we lack closer relationships with our customers that would allow us to avoid spikes in demand. Because we manage locally without company-wide objectives, so we end up making decisions which are good for one department and then we create problems for the rest of the company. And we let uh, only financial metrics drive operations, ignoring the indirect costs which may hide under production factors that uh, often go unchallenged. Um, and also we uh, ignore the complexity of having more work in process, more bolts in the air as the saying goes, which then drive up the cost of production. We will cover these topics in a future lesson. Thank you for your time.